Walmart fall fashion, but make it a little grungy, make it a little edgy, and lots of outfit inspo. I have so much to show you. Let's get into it. Men's No Boundaries hooded plaid flannel shirt. You will have to tell me, am I late to the game on these? Because as much as I have been hoarding, do I wanna use the word hoarding? Walmart flannels, I have not discovered these hooded flannels and it is my year, it is my year. I went all in on these hooded flannels. A lot of them are actually under different links, which is why I just kept them all different link numbers. I just figured that that would be easier. Another thing that I particularly liked about these was a lot of them had this sort of mismatched approach with pairing one half of the shirt on one side of the buttons has one color or pattern and another one has a different one or maybe the sleeves are different. I don't know. I just really liked that element to several of them. That, of course, is not the case for all of them. What you're seeing here, I have these in anywhere from a medium through an extra large. I normally get the George flannels in an XL tall. Stay tuned for that. And I find that to be a really good size for me. I think I've landed on that I like large in this one the best on me. They don't go quite as long as the XL tall. So please tell me if you have these. Tell me the scoop. I need to know the scoop. And and if you happen to be new to men's flannels, which probably a lot of you aren't that are watching this video, one of the things that I absolutely do love about men's flannels versus women's flannels is the fact that the arms are longer. So when you are tying them around your waist, which I inevitably do, whether it's part of the look or just that's where my evening ends up kind of a thing. It ends up with the flannel tied around my waist and you, you a hippie chick like I am. It really makes a difference when stuff is tied around your waist and it barely has anything left on the end. It's not the same vibe. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. It's not the same vibe. You need sort of those arms hanging down to kind of get the look. And another reason I like that too is often I will wear flannels with leggings and things like that. And sometimes my shirt doesn't fully go down to my crotch. So when you have those arms hanging there, it also services as that. Because I always like to say that I like to cover the C and the B, which is the crotch and the butt whenever I wear flannels. And one little hack to cover the C is having the arms hang there if your shirt doesn't quite get there. These are all different price points. The one link I clicked on is $14. Several of them are clearance, but I'm not going to put up a price on this one because it is kind of all over the map, but just know they're under $20. So anyway, let me know about these. Do you like them? Have you seen these? Are these new? Give me, give me the deets. I need the deets. Epic Studios men's multi-plaid patchwork flannel shirt. I was super excited to find these. This is a new brand for me at Walmart. I really liked their take on a flannel here. Clearly on the last one, I had just talked about some of the mismatched. I feel like this takes that to even the next level with that, where it's part way down an arm or part way on the one side. And I don't know, it's just different. That's what I really liked about them. I am wearing these in a size large. I feel like that size is fine for me. They feel a little bit less kind of flannel-y. I'd say they feel in the middle between the men's button down shirt and a flannel. The ones that feel the most flannel-y to me are the George ones that are gonna be coming up here later. These are $19.98, but still very much worth it. I think the look is very unique. And if you are a flannel chick like I am, if you a grungy gal, you might really like these. Oh, pardon the interruption, it's just me, host Jen. I wanted to welcome you into the channel if you happen to be new here, and if you are not new, then welcome back. We are in WOW Week. What is WOW Week? It stands for Week of Walmart, where I upload a week's worth of Walmart videos seven days in a row. If you don't know where you're falling today within WOW Week, because it's your first video you're watching in the series, you are here. And don't forget to check out all the other videos that have either already been uploaded or are to come here in Wow Week. My channel is all about helping you be your most confident self through fashion and style. And although Wow Week is generally going to be a try on haul series with some styling, I mostly do styling on this channel. So if you are looking for affordable outfit ideas, then definitely consider subscribing. We always like to say that we cook looks. On this channel, we be cooking them looks. Our community here is full of awesome folk. So if you are also awesome, then consider subscribing. If you're not awesome, 
I don't know. It might get weird because we are all awesome. Don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I have been in the kitchen cooking them looks. And I always like to warn folks that I'm just a little, just a little smidge goofy, sometimes more than others. We also do a ton of Walmart on this channel, so if you love Walmart, I would probably also consider subscribing. Again, only if you're awesome. Everything that I show here today will be listed and linked down below in the description box by number. Click the title of the video underneath the video, which will open up a box, and then you can click more, and that will give you access to all the links. If you do decide to use my links, please know how much I appreciate you. That is a way to support me, my channel, and my content that is of no additional cost to you. And I can never thank you enough. Let's keep going with the video. Free assembly men's bandana printed over shirt. I thought these were really fun. I don't know how grungy they are, but this was definitely the best video for them. You are not gonna believe it. The price point on these today is $5.70. One is $5.83 and the other one's $5.72. Oddly, yesterday when I was doing some voiceovers, I noticed these were in the $6. So apparently they keep going down in price. I don't know if they're gonna go down much below $5, but they're fully stocked. I am wearing both of these in a size extra large. I don't don't prefer that size. I think I'm actually going to reorder them in a size large. I feel like they are just a little bit too big, but I love the bandana print. I feel like that gives it a little bit of a feminine touch, even though of course it's a men's shirt, but I really like the fact that it has the patchwork style, larger pockets on the front. It reminds me of a little bit of the camp shirts that I've been wearing all summer, but this is of course in a long sleeve. And the fact that they're calling it an overshirt, I think actually makes a ton of sense because it kind of feels like a cross between a shacket and a button down shirt. Like it's a little bit heavier. I really like the length on these two. I think they're going to be good with leggings. So this is an all around win for me. And I mean, $5 and it's fully stocked size small through triple XL. I mean, if you like this, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on these right here because on the website, it looks like they are sold out. However, I'm sure you can probably still get them in store. They are clearance. They're another men's knit flannel shirt. Uh, the website is showing them in the $8 range and they're by free assembly. And I am wearing this in a large. I know I keep saying everything is a cross between something, but this almost reminds me of a cross between a flannel and a fleece. I promise I'm not making this stuff up just for sport. I really do feel like a lot of these things are in two different camps and I'm trying to really give you accurate descriptions but that's enough on this one because it is sold out on the website, but definitely check in store if you have free assembly in your store. Another day, another free assembly men's shirt. Also not gonna spend a lot of time on this one because it's also sold out, but definitely check in store. I just wanted to quickly note, I loved the patchwork style pockets on this one. They call it a vintage inspired flannel shirt. I'm wearing it at an extra large. I feel like I could probably do a large. I guess I'm sort of learning that the free assembly men's stuff, I think maybe large is the size that at least I prefer. I'd say it leans a little bit more kind of flannel button down, but a little bit thicker. Not quite shacket territory. It's very cute and I think we can all learn a lesson here to continue to check the free assembly men's department if we weren't doing that before let's start doing that I absolutely love these time and true hooded flannels. I'm a huge flannel lover, as you guys know. I love the addition of a lot of them having hoods this year. It's obviously not a new concept, but it just seems to be definitely around more this year. This one is giving a little bit more of kind of a preppier flannel, which I also love because preppy is also a vibe for me. I think you can kind of dress it lots of different ways, really. I'm wearing this one in a size large. I feel like sometimes when you buy women's flannels, that's why I often buy men's, is they're shorter. And this one is a little bit longer and I do like that about it. This one's $17.98 and I can't recommend enough. It's one of my absolute favorite things from Walmart that I picked up this fall. Highly recommend.
Time and True Women's Cropped Hooded Flannel. I love these. You probably heard in another video that I love the hooded flannel concept. I know it's nothing new, but I've been seeing them everywhere this year and I'm kind of loving it. These are a crop style. So with that, I decided to go down to a medium. I mean, I often do wear a medium in Time and True, but normally on a flannel, I would wear a large. I decided to go down to a medium because with a crop style and me being very pear shaped, it generally is falling at the smallest part of my waist. However, trying these on, seeing the footage back, I think that definitely a large would be better. I don't know if I'm gonna bother to return it. I like it enough that I don't think I want the hassle, but this does come in four colors. And as you can see, I got two different colors. I also got the blue and the green. Highly recommend these, but I would consider getting either your true size, or if you want a little bit more of a baggier fit, you could even go up a size. Speaking of flannels, this is probably my number one favorite, but we're going by categories here. It's the George Men's Brand flannel shirts. These are absolutely incredible. My little hack is that I get them in an XL tall. I do this because they're a little bit longer and it provides for better butt coverage if you wear them a lot with leggings, which I certainly do. The one downside to it is that the tall option doesn't start until XL. If you want a 2XL, you can get that in a tall on up but if you want a medium or a large or whatever in a tall, it doesn't come with that. These are $11.98, so soft, so cozy, warm in the best way, but also lightweight, meaning I wouldn't be wearing these outside as some sort of a shacket if it's actually cold out, but they are also nice and toasty warm to cuddle up on the couch. I wear them with a lot of graphic tees, leather leggings. I just always check back year after year to see what new plaid pattern and color stories they have. I have certain ones in my closet that are years old and they wash and wear well time and time again. This is probably my number one pick. I love these. <laughs> Free assembly men's camp shirt. I, of course, love this one. I'm sure you know exactly why. It has the checkered. I love everything checkered, particularly black and white checkered. I'm wearing this one in a size large. It is now clearance. I think I bought it at full price. Today it's showing at 929. I feel like yesterday it was showing at 11. So I don't know what it'll be when you click the link, but it's fully stocked. I am wearing it in a size large. I did style this one in August. So forgive, it's a little bit more summery looking, but I can't recommend these camp shirts enough. If you like a little bit more of an edgier, kind of a grungier feel, which really isn't this one. I would call this one almost more like fun and funky. I really think that the camp shirts are a great choice for the summertime. I feel like sometimes it's harder to dress kind of fun, funky, edgy, or whatever grungy in the summer, but I feel like these camp shirts this past summer have really made a big difference for me. I was heavily buying the ones by No Boundaries, and if you do have those ones by Men's No Boundaries, they are definitely a little bit more of a flowy, kind of a blow in the wind style shirt. This one, is definitely thicker, like not gonna be blowing in the wind, if that's helpful. Time and True Women's Flannel Shirt. So I originally got these to kind of be more edgy sedgy, as I like to say. However, upon wearing them, because I know they've had these for years, but I have not really invested in many of them, maybe one here or there. They give off for me a little bit more of just a general button down shirt vibe. Perhaps if I got them a couple sizes oversized, they would give off the same sort of vibe as some of the men's flannels that I like that are a little bit more of a grungier feel. These are $14.98. They do come in 18 different colors, which is pretty awesome. I am wearing my true size large. I wanted to at least represent what it would look here if I had it down and opened, tucked and buttoned, and then also down and out, down and out and buttoned, just to kind of give you guys a size reference idea. I'm probably going to wear this more how I have it in the middle, which I would say is more of a preppy look, but I wanted to put it in this video because it is plaid. I sort of think plaid and grunge are somewhat synonymous. So just in case you had your eye on them, I just wanted you to get the general vibe. One reason why I do like men men's flannels as well, and I have said this before, is the arms are longer. And when you tie them around your waist, which I feel like I inevitably do, and you have some big old hips like I do, it just provides more arm length, it, sleeve length, sorry, not arm length, <laughs> in order to do that. These are good though, I still recommend them. Mm -hmm. 
time and true faux leather leggings. If you've been around, these really don't need much of an introduction. It's exciting that last year they actually came out in the brown color and they are still available for this year in brown. The leggings come in a size small through triple XL and they are $14.96. I personally have them in both a large and an extra large. I have found since gaining weight over the last year that the extra large is definitely a better fit for me. So I would say that they fit somewhat true to size, maybe leaning a little bit big. If you've not tried them, the reason why they're so great is they give you that faux leather legging look, but they honestly feel like athleisure style leggings. You absolutely could go running in these. You could go to the gym in these. They don't have the faux leather smell. And because I've gotten comments in the past about how I wash them or people having issues with washing them, I turn them inside out. I do wash them in the laundry, but I wash them on cold and then I let them air dry. And I've never had an issue with the finish of them changing over time or any problems with them at all. I can't recommend these enough. I probably should buy more just because I wear them all the time. I'm always trying to dig them out of the laundry and literally doing special loads of laundry just so that I can wear them again because I probably should have 10 pairs. I don't know. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> This faux leather strapless pleated midi dress by Scoop sold out so quickly. I'm a broken record when it comes to talking about Scoop stuff selling out, but I am still gonna keep it in here because it sold out very fast, which leaves me hopeful that they will restock it. And I know some of you have Scoop in your store. You might remember if you've been around for a second, I actually styled this last year in I think my edgy part two video of wow week in the green. I love that dress. Some of you have asked if I still have that dress. I do. When I saw it in the black, I had to get it. You know what I want to style this with is a mesh fitted shirt. I just bought some from Amazon that I want to share at some point. I'm wearing this one in a size large. I did explain in another video, but anytime that I'm able to size more for my upper body as a pear shape that allows give to my lower body, such as those crinkle skirts we talk about, such as the pleated piece of this dress, it just really serves me well because otherwise you're kind of having to pick to size for one part of your body. I love this for that reason. I think it gives edgy wedding vibes, everything. I love it. I was almost about to say slay and I'm like, Jen, you're too old to say slay, but slay, slay all day. Okay, that's enough. Scoop faux leather wide leg pants. These are so good. These would have been in my favorites video if they met the price point, which I think my favorites video was $25 and under. These are $34. I got them in both colors because I just love them so much. The black pair here that you're seeing is in a size large. I had originally gotten the burgundy pair in a size extra large. So what you're seeing with the pink is in a size extra large. If you wanna kind of see the size difference, Differences. Just thought that they looked a little bit too big and were sort of giving off a sloppy vibe. So I decided to try the large and I definitely like them better. So because of that, extra large would definitely be my true size. So I'm going to say that these run big. They're wide leg, which is hit and miss with me. I absolutely love where they fall on the leg. The one look that I put together here with the blazer and the graphic tee with these metallic boots, it's definitely one of my favorite looks in a long time. I think that these appear dressy enough to wear as workwear. Maybe not not everybody does the faux leather thing for work wear. I know I do. So in case you're like me, I think that these definitely can be dressed up for work wear. And if not, they just good. Can we all have a round of applause because these are in stock? Like it's shocking. They are in stock. We are about halfway through this video. So please give the video a like if you are digging it so far. That really helps out me and my channel and I appreciate it so, so much. Celebrity Pink Faux Leather Black Shacket. So this one comes in an extra small through an extra large. I am wearing this one in a size small, and although arguably it does fit, I can zip it and things like that. Probably the medium would be best. I think I had read somewhere that it definitely ran big, kind of oversized on purpose, and knowing that it fell at your waist because it's kind of cropped, the smallest part of me body. So oftentimes when stuff like that happens, I do tend to size down, although I sized down in the crop 
crop from earlier and I feel like that didn't work out well for me either. So apparently I need a new strategy. I don't think it's horrific, but I would prefer probably to have a medium. I, I can't really say that I'm obsessed with it, but I, I think it's really solid and I, I really like it and I have absolutely nothing bad to say about it. I really like that the pockets are snaps and I like where it falls on the waist because it's kind of giving shacket vibes, but it is cropped. So it is a little bit different there. Just have to wear it a little bit differently because oftentimes with my shackets and flannels and things like that, I'm trying to get butt coverage out of them. And in this one, of course, that's just, just not going to be the sitch. It's not the sitch. Uh, this one is $29.50. Scoop women's high-rise faux leather cargo pants. Hold your breath. This one is in stock, y'all. It's in stock. This one is $34. I am wearing my true size 16. They fit. I feel like they were a little bit snug up around my butt area. I mean, come on. Who's surprised? Nobody, Jen. Nobody is surprised by this. I do really, really like these. I think that they're a little bit different. Probably like the olive better. I specifically have olive pants that are faux leather. <laughs> <laughs> They're not cargo, but I'm like, come on, Jen. Although I have black. Okay, my own argument against me just doesn't even work. I'd say that these do run true to size. They have 17 reviews. Looks like they have four and a half out of five stars. I'd say you could get away with wearing them for workwear. There's something about them that I think looks a little bit more trouser-y, even though they are cargo pants. So just depending on the situation with your work, you might be able to wear these, you might not. But they do kind of give off that vibe for me a little bit. Time and true asymmetrical faux leather jacket. I was so excited to see this for a couple reasons. I feel like I am just stalking the Walmart website looking for scoop moto jackets. Like when's the next color gonna come out? Because I have all the colors in the scoop moto jacket. We haven't seen that yet in this video, but you will. I've styled it a million times. I was excited to see Time and True come out with a faux leather. I guess they're not calling it a moto jacket. I'm calling it a moto jacket. It does have a few less zippers. I do want to mention that. So on the arms, the scoop one very distinctly does have zippers on the arms. I do like that better. Maybe that crosses it over into a moto jacket. What constitutes an actual moto jacket? What are the characteristics? Should we Google it? They're an edgier take on a classic leather jacket. It's typical that they have more hardware and zippers and are faux leather or suede, and they're typically a shorter hem. This is a blog post by Busby Style. She is a YouTuber if you guys don't follow her. I mean, this one does have zippers. It doesn't have as many zippers. I think that the quality seems fine. Scoop moto jacket quality seems like it's a little bit better. Personally like that this one came in the chocolate brown. So I was gonna buy it no matter what. This one also does come in black. If you're looking for a black moto jacket, I would spend the extra $15 and get the one from Scoop. And just to give you context, I've had mine for years. I think when they first came out with it and it's still going very strong and it's my most worn jacket probably. So I can speak to how long that one lasts and, and the quality of it. I can't as much to this one because it's new. Time and true high rise faux leather wide leg trousers. I had very high hopes for these. And as you can see, they just, really don't look that great. They don't look terrible, but they really don't look that great. I don't know what it is uh, with these. I don't know if it's the wide leg or I, I kind of actually think it might be more of that pin tucking in the front. And I am wearing these in my true size 16. I probably could stand to go up a size to make them maybe look better, but I don't know. I just still sort of feel like they're not going to look great even based on what they looked like at this size. So these also do come in black. I feel like for me at five, six, they are a pretty good length on me, especially if I was going to wear these to work or something in terms of wearing them with a small type of a heel or a flat. They're $24.98 and they come in a size 2 through an 18. Mm -hmm. 
time and true short faux leather puffer jacket. I really like this. I feel like the material is somewhere between what we would typically see with a faux leather and almost the swishy type of material of an actual puffer jacket. If you're comparing this as an example to the time and true moto jacket, it's not exactly the same, but it gives off the same effect, which is still great. This one is $29.98. I am wearing a size medium. I always do size down in puffer jackets because they're gonna have the propensity to just make me look ginormous. It is a little bit of a controversial opinion as, oh, Jen, can you even zip it? I can't. But then it also doesn't make me look like a full-on marshmallow. So it's a trade-off. Typically with a jacket like this, I'm gonna incorporate it as an actual jacket with my look versus true jackety jacket, as I like to say. I'm going out in the cold and this is what's standing between me and the cold. Probably not. My true size on this one, because it's cropped, likely could be a large. My true size on the typical puffer jackets from Walmart that are a little bit longer is going to be an extra large because I've got to encapsulate these hips, as I like to say. That is one reason why I like the crop as well, because it doesn't have to encapsulate these hips and I can go down in size. If you do want to understand all the stuff I'm talking about, how I size this, that way, this way, and the other way with jackets and more, I do have an older video on my channel that's one of my more popular videos and it's eight unique ways to look thinner, advice from someone who's not not already thin and I talk about how I size for my body. I don't size based on my weight. I size for how I want something to fit along with lots of other things. So I will link that video for you. Scoop faux leather moto jacket. This is my soulmate level jacket, okay? I often will say that certain things are my love language if you are new here. Moto jackets are one of those things that are my love language. I am wearing this in the size medium. It is $45. It has been around for a very long time. I believe it's an absolute bestseller of Scoop. I think that's why they haven't gotten rid of it. To give you an idea, we've got four and a half out of five stars over 230 reviews. I think my reviews is one of those two because I could not resist reviewing this dang thing. It's so good. It's available in black, fudge, which is kind of like more of a burgundy, and then the olive color. It comes in an extra small through an XXL. Sometimes faux leather stuff I have found doesn't wear the best over time, but the black one in particular, I've had the longest ever since they started coming out with it. Has it been five years? I'm not exactly sure. Is in amazing shape, and I wear it constantly. It's been packed. It's probably been beat up a little little bit and it is in fantastic shape. I do want to note here the way that I size for these, I don't size to zip them. I've talked a lot about jackets and how I size for jackets. I size to wear this one open. My mentality with jackets is why do I want to size for the size to zip it if I'm not ever going to wear it closed? Now, if you are going to wear it closed, then of course size to have it zipped up. But for me, I just don't really believe in sizing for something Thing. If I'm literally never going to wear it that said way, it's like, what's the point? I might as well size where it looks the best in the way that I plan on wearing it, which is open. My true size with this one would be, I'd say, a large. If it were longer, which it's not, it's more of a cropped length or kind of a more of a normal length, my true size would definitely be an extra large. Um, when stuff is cropped, I can usually go down a size because it falls at my smallest part. And then if I'm going to wear it open on top of that, go down even another size. So they're amazing. They're so good. They're so good. Portland Boot Company Glitter Lace-Up Boot. So if you've been around for a while, you know how much I hate these shoes. I absolutely hate them, they're awful. <laughs> That is a joke. These have been my most worn boots for the last, I think this would be my third season, at least for the black glitter pair that I have. I don't have words, I don't have words. All I can say is if these are new to you <laughs> or my channel is new to you, I know they appear like they're out there. And I have to tell you, when I first started wearing stuff like this and faux leather leggings and kind of leaning into my more edgy nature that I knew I always had but was afraid to dress like that, 
It felt weird for me too, but I am telling you, obviously don't wear this stuff if you're not into it, but if you are into it but are nervous about it, you get used to it. I have no qualms, and I always make this joke, about wearing these to the grocery store. Like, I literally could not care less. I usually don't dress like this to the grocery store, but I have if I'm going on my way to something else. And my point is, I could be going anywhere in these shoes, and I literally don't think twice about it. If you want it to lean into any style of of dressing just start just start somewhere I felt the same way about faux leather leggings I remember thinking where am I gonna wear these and then I just started wearing them and then I haven't stopped wearing them it really is wild I know we're not talking about that here we're talking about the boots I have all these in a half size down from my true size believe it or not have not styled them for this year everything I'm putting up here is just inspo picks from prior years because if you are new here and you're seeing these for the first time since they did fully restock the black Black, the pink and the red. I want you to have at least just outfit inspo. I feel like my personality at this point is synonymous with these boots. I will just have people reaching out to me in DMs. Hey, what about that with the glitter boots? Almost like Jen and the glitter boots. It's a synonymous term at this point. It's just so funny. And I absolutely love how many of you I've turned on to these boots. And I mean, it really just fills my entire life with joy. I can't even tell you. <laughs> I'm really looking for any excuse to wear these hot pink loafers. I have featured them and they do run true to size. Anytime that I introduce a color seemingly out of thin air, I like to pare it down secondarily so that it looks very intentional and not accidental, which is why I brought in the pink purse. I decided to go with white accessories just because that little tiny white strip at the top of the dress is kind of like what I said about bringing in a new color. That color was there just kind of like chilling on its own, you know? It's black and white is classic, right? I mean, so you don't really have to do anything with it, but me being the person that I am, I'm like, let's bring some more white in here. I feel as though it's almost like my invitation to bring in white. I felt this exact same way if you've been around with my whole gingham on gingham, the orange and the pink. There was that tiny little pink stripe on the orange gingham skirt, and I viewed that as my invitation to bring in hot pink. I did the checkered. I knew going with the lug loafer, I was keeping it kind of edgy sedgy. So I wanted to bring in something else that was kind of edgy sedgy. I know this cuts me in half. Just a disclaimer, I don't dress to appear taller. I don't really care at all. And then one of the things I like to do when I'm mixing patterns is, so clearly this is a true checkerboard style pattern mixed with a black and white gingham pattern. And because they are linear geometric paired with, you know, linear geometric, they're in the same color story and they're the same shape, meaning they're both squares. I feel like they're almost like cousins. So I believe that they pair very well together. My kind of rule with pairing linear versus nonlinear patterns would tell me that because these two are cousins, I could also bring in a completely separate pattern that's more kind of non-linear maybe like floral or something else that's kind of how I view that's one way of you mixing patterns I know you guys often like when I talk about that kind of stuff so I'll continue to talk about it No Boundaries Women's High Top Canvas Lug Sneakers. These are in the plaid version. It's hard to tell, but in there, it looks like we've got some kind of like taupe, tan, cream, red, burgundy, gray. I love stuff like this because sort of what I said about floral sneakers earlier in the video, they really just lend themselves to pulling outfits together when you, number one, have just an interesting pattern. You can either pair it down with a second pattern. It would make the outfit from a fashion standpoint a little bit more elevated because when you add in stuff like mixing patterns, it usually does that to a look. And then the other piece of it is, although the color story isn't overly vast in here, the more colors you have, just the more options you have to put things with it. And I really like the sole on these. They're kind of that heavy looking treaded lug style sole. I just overall really like these. They do have the memory foam in the bottom. They're so good. Highly recommend. <laughs> The cat 
Sam and Libby Glitz Lug Sole Loafers. I feel like there is really just not much to say about these other than they're perfect. They're totally my style. I love that they're both glitzy and edgy because if you see the glitziness is sort of little spikes. And then of course they have the lug sole. I mean, they're just perfect in every way, if you ask me. It's also a way to be blingy without being too over the top because I do have another pair of loafers by Madden NYC that are really over the top. Like you would see them coming down the street kind of a thing, which I also like. But if you want a little bit more of an edgy feminine glam, this might be for you. They do run true to size and they are $25. No Boundaries Fashion Lug Loafers. For me, these are the loafers that started it all. My lug love for lug loafers. I mean, truly, I got them last year in the ivory color. I actually didn't get a chance to style these in the black with a silver chain detail yet this year, but I am gonna pop up inspo for you uh, from last year of, I think it's three different ways that I styled the ivory cream pair, which I still have, I still love. I've worn these a bunch. I feel like you often have to kind of just train the back of your ankle to get used to them, but once you get used to them, they're very, very comfortable. I love the way that the lug style looks. I I really truly hope these stay in style for a while longer yet. I guess they've now been around a couple years. I do find that they run true to size and they also come in whole sizes only. Kind of a bummer. Madden NYC rhinestone lug sole penny loafers. Not much else to say about these. It's like, what can I keep saying about loafers? I mean, maybe this is therapeutic. We could talk about why I bought so many. I'm not really sure. I'm wearing these in my true size. Luckily, these do come in half sizes, so that's really nice. Stacked heel is a little bit of a nice feature, and I feel like it does add to the comfort level. I still need to style these. I am definitely excited to do so. These are $30. They currently have three reviews uh, with an average of 4.3 star rating on the website. Madden NYC, I continue to absolutely adore their bags and their shoes. I feel like this skirt I can really get behind. It almost reminds me of a cheerleading skirt. It takes me back. It's faux leather and I got it in a size bigger because I just know skirts like this are just gonna be kind of like short or whatever and I didn't want it to be riding up my butt. Um, so I got it in XXL. I like this though. Should I keep this? What do we think about this one? I could see it with tights in the winter with combat boots. That's probably how I would wear it. Even fishnet or something you know, kind of edgy as I do, as I do. Obviously you could dress it up too for work if you wanted to. This one I had kind of put to the side because I feel like I want it in a smaller size. So this is a large, it has fur, it has all the things for something like this. I'm probably not gonna wear it closed. I'm probably gonna wear it open. It already has kind of the propensity to make probably me look a little bit bigger in terms of the shoulders, the way this lays and stuff, but I actually, I really do love this. So for that reason, I would just go down a size. And honestly, I'd probably wear this more like a shackety jackety versus a jackety jacket. I don't know, we'll see. I'd love to get my hands on that one in a size medium. All right, that's gonna do it. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite outfit or item. If you made it all the way till the end of this video, I can never thank you enough. That really helps out me and my channel when you watch all the way till the end. If you're still here, please leave me a heart emoji or the secret video word of slay. Don't forget to subscribe if you're awesome and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I've been in the kitchen cooking them looks and I will see you in the next one. Bye.